Welcome to How the Song Came to Be, where soulful songwriters share the stories behind their songs, as well as tools and creative practices you can use to bring your best songs or other creative works to life. I'm Ann Heaton, your host. In my experience, I can set up a place to write and get on a, you know, I, and I don't write in it. I set up an entire room to write in so that this will be my writing space. And inevitably, when these moments happen where a song comes, uh, or the beginnings of a song comes, I am not in that room. I am on the couch with the television on and I have to go find paper. Um, it's, not a, um, it's not a structured thing. Welcome songwriters. I'm Anne Heaton, your host and founder of Soul Song School. I am here with Melissa Farrick. Melissa Farrick is a singer songwriter who was signed to Atlantic Records at the age of 21. She has released 17 albums over the last 24 years and toured extensively throughout North America. She has shared the stage with artists such as Morrissey, Mark Cohen, Paul Westerberg, John Hyatt, Joan Armitrading, Weezer, Tegan and Sarah, Bob Dylan, Ani DeFranco and Katie Lang, among others. Melissa is currently uh, an, an associate professor at Berklee College of Music, as well as the artistic director of the Five Week Programs Performing Songwriter Division. She is also currently earning her Master's of Education at Harvard University. Welcome to the show, Melissa. I'm so happy you're here. Thanks, Anne. You forgot yeah. to include yourself and shared the stage with. And share the stage with Anne Heaton. That's yes. exactly right. Many, many stick, times. Stick I my name the stage with you, too. Yeah. Uh, and I've shared the stage with you. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Super fun. Well, so you've mentioned that we've shared the stage, so we've known each other a long time. Um, and in thinking about talking to you, I realized I don't know the answer to this question. Um, but I'd love to start the way that I start with all the songwriters, which is, can you talk a little bit about how and why you got into songwriting? What's what compelled you? What's your story around why you began? Yeah. Well, when I was little, like five, I started playing violin, you know, and um, I used to write these little songs. The first one was called Dead Skunk in the Middle of the Road. And um, <laughs> it was a great song. And um, so I wrote that on the way to violin lessons with my mother. And that's like one of my happiest childhood memories is driving to my violin lessons every Thursday with my mom and she would let me steer the car sitting on her lap and I would make up songs with her in the car. And um, so that kind of joy space um, and space of not thinking about anything else arrived when I was really little in this extremely safe and loving place with my mother that mm -hmm. I looked forward to every week to go play an instrument. So they kind of like all merged. I really do think that that's when it started. And I wrote that song down. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I, there's a dead skunk in the middle of the road. It's stinking and smelling and smelling and stinking. It's a dead skunk in the middle of the road. You know, it was just like, uh, and then I wrote other little songs and I learned how to notate and I would be into that. Um, and so I just started writing so I don't really know how it started other than I realized that I could put melody to words and that um it would make me feel happy inside mm -hmm. and it would help me to not worry because mm -hmm. I was I was a worried kid mm -hmm. so I think that that's why it started and um yeah do you want to go ahead let me I want to ask you a little question about it so um and how, well, because I think about my girls, they're, as you yeah. know, six, and when, even when they were two, they'd be singing, making up songs in their cars. I don't know what they were saying, something about the trees, or was there a way that your mom responded or didn't respond that made you really feel like it was that safe space and you kept going? Yeah. Like, did she, did she, did you, or did she say, like, good job, or? Well, she would sing with me, um, oh. and there was a lot of laughter, or... Uh, sing that again. Mm -hmm. I like, you know, I like that. Um, and also the, like, the use of, like, a subject matter, like a dead skunk, you know what I mean? Like, 
And I had another one uh, called It's You and Me and Mommy Tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, which like uh, had a bad word in it, but because it was in a song, I, kn I didn't get in trouble. Oh, yeah. You know, so like I was allowed to say things that I might not have said. For instance, um, one of the boys in their gram, he was six, and he said, um, there's a song, uh, but it has a, uh, there's this song that's on the radio, but it has a really bad word in it. Um, and we were like, what, what, what are you talking about? And he was like, it's the S word. And so, you know, you think something really bad. And he's like, it's called Shut Up and Dance. And, um, and so, <laughs> but, like, he's allowed to sing that song, you know, oh, so, right. he sings it. so I think that music gives you um, songs, you know, Kind of not only does it give you the ability to sing if you haven't written it, things that you feel re like relate to you and what you're going through, but it also helps you to sing things that you might not have said or mm -hmm. you know out loud. Um, mm -hmm. Like I would oh, I never, you know, and I, so it's kind of weird. Like everybody dance now, you know what I mean? Like I like we know pop hits or we know silly things or you know, yeah that aren't really a part of our lives and anyway so i love that I, mean, I just want to highlight a, a, a what i'm thinking i'm hearing which is basically like your mom i mean your mom's not like a, a, a musician right no yeah no. no but she 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 joined in that joy space with you and that's what yeah. it sounds like to me like she joined in the joy like you were making joy and then she nurtured that yeah so that's really cool and you're writing songs about like just what's going on like i'm imagining there was a dead skunk or you you yeah. must have been and so it's just like really concrete or you, me and you and mommy. Yeah. It's, it, there's not like these, you're a kid, you're just singing about your life or what's going on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that that's probably, I mean, that's the kind of songs I write too. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, um, I don't, uh, I mean, I know your girls, so I know that like they're really, really create. Like I, I wasn't the kind of kid who, uh, like Johnny, the little guy, like he'll, he, he sings about things that nobody knows what he's talking about. You know, like, it's like, um, like you said, when like you're talking tree. about Johnny, you're talking about your son. I'm just clarifying. Yeah. 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 yeah like a little, like, a little like, you know, like that there's like a, the dragon in the clouds and the trees, you know, in, in your, in your stomach and, and then ha 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 ha. It's just like really fantasy oriented kind of mm -hmm. thoughts, mm -hmm. which I didn't do. So I think I, I actually wanted, that would be a really fun thing to, um, to study, which would be, you know, songwriters who like us, our age or older and look at their like very first pieces of work and see if they were, you know, narrative or if they were third person oriented or if they were fantasy oriented. Like, I wonder what Tom York's, five-year-old songs yeah what, the, what that lyrical content was like well i'll have to call him and ask him yeah. <laughs> find out on um, tomorrow's interview no you never know um so i want to know that too i know my first song was about um cotton candy ballet lessons and carnivals i think um See, that's interesting. I was just trying to gather everything that was a happy place and throw it all in one song. All in one song. Yeah. Yeah. But that, it didn't go well. Like I performed that. I've probably already said this, like, but this is a story I tell all the time, but I performed that at a Montessori school for our teacher on, at, during line, circle line time yeah. where it's time to share a song. And she was like, does anyone have a song to share? And I was like, oh, cause I had just written the song about cotton candy. And then she was like, well, Oh, what, what would you like to share? And so I sang it. I was, I was just like vibing out, just loving that I was sharing my happy place with everyone. And then when it was over, she was like, can anyone please share a song? We all know. Oh no, that's like, that's like the worst thing I've ever heard. And I was like, then I didn't write a song until I was like 26. But anyway, see, that's, that's not a good teacher. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's, but that's what I love hearing about like what your mom did. And, and now yeah. that we both are moms thinking about how we interact, you know, um, yeah. and, and one of the things I say to writers that are, you know, in their teens or in their twenties or even adults who get nervous is you could do this when you were a kid because you didn't. You didn't have any judgment you know you were just like making up sounds you know you're making up sounds singing words driving down the road there's a tree you could sing like there's a tree you know like yeah. so just they have that flow but anyway so for you as you got older did you just continuously do it from when you were a little kid or did it 
like was it reborn when you were an adolescent or how did that look yeah i think it petered out there for a while um so i wrote songs when i was very young but they were very they were like my own they were like my own made up nursery rhymes right so i think a lot of i think most kids do that and then um but i was playing violin and it was classically you know it was suzuki so it was very serious and i loved it and then so we're playing trumpet in like third grade. So I was playing trumpet and violin. And then um, I guess it was like in eighth grade. And there was this kid in town, John, who was older. He was probably like, you know, 16 or something. Uh, it felt like he was a lot older. And he had some recording equipment. And I had written this song suddenly. I just suddenly realized that I wanted to write songs. I don't really know what happened. I really, I really don't, I really don't know. Maybe it was because um, I got a guitar and I was playing bass. I was taking bass lessons, and then my aunt had this guitar that was like under her bed, so she gave it to me. And I learned how to play like four chords, and I just started writing songs all over it. And what I realized was that the diary entries that I had been doing, and I had been writing. So I actually, that's right. So I had been writing poetry and short stories and submitting them to my school's little newspaper. And we had a little magazine of poetry and, and my pieces would get in there and that felt really good and validating. And, um, and then I realized that you could put words like that to music. And, um, and that was it, I was hooked. You know, that, I mean, by, by my freshman year, I was, I mean, I was still playing sports a little bit, but not really. It was just everything was shifting right towards music all the time. And, um, and that really started right with that, with that kid, John. I, I went over to his house, and I don't remember. Uh, I think the song was called All Through the Night, which is like, you know, such a basic cliche title. But um, he demoed it for me. You know, so there were like other instruments on it, and I heard my voice through a microphone with effects on it. And it was like so cool. I used to go over there and hang out in his basement. And, um, we had these other, these other girls that I was friends with would come and sing background vocals. And we would just do this thing after school. It was a really good time. So I just kept writing songs. That's, and then I was in talent shows. You know, kind of all, it feels like, you know how when you're in high school, it feels like it's taking so long to get through it. But mm -hmm. now it seems like it was a really fast period of time. It's only four years. You know, now four years, I think about four years. I mean, that's like four years of, I can do a lot in four years now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's just I love interesting. That. I love that you had that really great foundation, you know, like you, you had people making sure you had lessons. Your mom was, you know, like she was encouraging you in her way and then you ran into this kid, John, and you had talent. Yeah. You were doing, I didn't know any of that about you. I think that that's, that's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if no, there was ever an, an adult home when we were over there. <laughs> but, you know, it was the 80s and it was like nothing bad ever happened. He was a great, yeah. know, great guy. He was, I, but I think he was, he might have, it might have been my freshman year of high school and he had already graduated. And I think he was dating one of the girls that was the background singer. And I don't think that they were like supposed to be dating. So there was that kind of like high school drama going on. Yeah. And that, and that actually made it more fun, you know, because you feel right. like you're alive. Like you feel like right. not only are, is this a, like, you know, you're making a demo and you, you have this feeling about it, like that, you know, on cassettes, that's how it was then. And, <clears throat> and then there was also this like danger factor that. Well, the excitement, maybe it like gives you energy for, to make the recording. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and you're in a basement and it's dark and there's like a lava lamp and like the Christmas lights are up and the dog is <laughs> upstairs. And... Oh, that's awesome. All right, let me, I have a couple other questions that I just, yeah, and I think, you, I think of these questions. So, yeah. um, um, well, I don't know which one to ask first. Okay, I'll just, I'm just going to roll them out. Okay, here we go. So I know sometimes when you're playing a live show, all your live shows are good, but I feel like when you feel like they're good, you'll say to me or someone after the show, it, you know, I was gone. Like, it was like I wasn't there. You know what I mean? Like, or I don't know exactly the words you use, but it's kind of like you say something like you got out of the way or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, maybe you can tell me what exact words you use. But 
Um, I'm wondering if that ever shows up for your writing process or if your writing is more, is different. Yes, the writing process, the one that I like the most, which is not a process, <laughs> is when it just happens. Mm -hmm. um, when it, you know, um, as Elizabeth Gilbert says, you know, like when it comes out of the walls. And, and I believe that to be true. Um, mm -hmm. I, I believe that to be the gift of songwriting. And um, the talent that I have is to put it down and then convey it. Oddly enough, um, talent is this word that comes, um, actually, it's a, it's a vessel. It, that's what the word is, like this Greek origin, which was a, <clears throat> talent was a, um, was a vessel, and it would, um, no, it wasn't. So there was this thing called an amphora, excuse me. It was called an amphora, and a talent was the measure of liquid or, <clears throat> or spice that could be put into this amphora and then put in the bottom of a boat. To, to then go and, and cross the seas, right? Okay. So I love that the talent was the amount of that, you know, substance that could be put in the vessel. Ooh. And that's it, like exactly what I think. It's just kind of a cool... Wait, so in other words, are, are you saying instead of looking at t a talent as something that you have or born with, talent could be looked at as something that you're willing to receive? Like, are you open enough to receive that song that's coming out of the wall. Is that what you mean? Yeah, and so if that's the case, if, that, if, I, think about that, uh, if I think about talent and me as my body as, or my soul as the vessel, maybe a combination of both, my spirit and my, and my physical being, then the amount of, so you know, what is a talent? It's actually, it's a talent back, it was an actual amount you know, it was a, mm -hmm. like a yard or however much, uh -huh. I don't know how much it was. But um, so depending on how I'm living my life, I mean, this is very heady and very esoteric, existential, I mean, but um, depending on how I'm living my life, I feel like that, that reflects um, the, uh, the amount of information I can take in. So Sometimes, uh -huh. I, sometimes my talent is really can sustain a lot of information and sometimes uh -huh. my talent can only. Uh, okay. Wait, so this is what I want to know. So depending on how you're living your life. Yeah. So let me get to that in a minute. So when this, when the song is coming out of the wall, for example, do you feel like you need to create space for that? Like, Oh, I, I need to make sure I'm doing nothing a few mornings this week or for an hour on Saturday, or can you be watching a television show and suddenly you feel like the song comes out of the wall or you can be driving in your car and you get it. Like, do you need to, to create space, you know, taking a walk in nature or something for this to happen? Or do you feel like you can live your life and those things will come? Yeah, I don't, I can't will it. So I mm -hmm. don't take a walk. <clears throat> I don't get ready and I'm mm -hmm. talk, you know, we're talking about the, the moments, right? Like that, that do not happen every day, the, the mm -hmm. out of the wall songs, you know, which are generally speaking the best songs I write. I mm -hmm. mean, they, they, to me, they are, they just are, they're better. And um, they're not done. You know, I have to do a lot of work with them, but the initial <clears throat> receiving um, the, that, that is a, um, you know, it kind of, I just had this thought, like, it's kind of like, remember before you knew who was calling you on the phone? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like that, like the, the anticipation that the joy of realizing who it is, mm -hmm. is almost the same as that moment that it starts to happen. I recognize mm -hmm. that moment when I start to write. And then it is like, I, um, like I don't remember. And that's what, when you talk about the live shows, that, that's, what I, that's when I get off the stage and I pretty much don't remember what I played. Mm -hmm. or, or it happens specifically when someone says, what was the third song you played? And, I'm, and my response is always like, I have no idea. Um, even, and even if I look at the set list, I could look at the set list and try to remember. Um, 
but it is a, it is a meditative state. And I think that writing is a meditative state too. When that phone call comes in and you don't know what it's going to be. So when you talk about that, these songs that come out of the wall are some of the best songs you write and granted yeah. you have to work on them. They don't come complete. Like yeah. what are there some ways that you would recommend that people like thinking of the songwriters listening? Are there, are there some ways you can treat yourself or live your life that it's more likely that you would hear this, this song coming, you know? Yeah. I mean, so what I'm, what we're taught is that, in order to be more open to receiving these moments of grace, um, you should be that writing every day as a practice um, is keeping your muscles uh, warmed up. Uh, and so whether or not I believe that to be true, I, I just don't know because um, if that were the case, then when I was playing, you know, whatever, almost 300, you know, 250 shows a year, um, living in this, uh, but then, you know, you could say, well, was that how I was supposed to be living? This is also like uh, philosophical. I'm just not sure. Uh, when people say that, you know, um, that, that rule of thumb um, kind of academic well, you have to write every day and it should be at the same time and you should have a writing space and uh, all of that. My experience is like, I'm not saying that that's wrong, that that doesn't work for some people. And there is probably a lot of truth to that. But in my experience, I can set up a place to write and get on a, you know, I, and I don't write in it. I set up an entire room to write in so that this will be my writing space. And inevitably, when these moments happen where a song comes uh, or the beginnings of a song comes, I am not in that room. I am on the couch with the television on and I have to go find paper. Um, it's not a, um, it's not a structured thing. I um, love that you're saying that because I feel like that doesn't get said very much. And I feel like it can set people up to think, Oh, I'm failing. I'm, I made this writing space. I'm not doing it every day. Like, and and you're, I mean, you're probably one of the most prolific songwriters I, I know and have known yeah. over the last many years. Um, I mean, That's, I can think how many songs I've written on Dunkin' Donut napkin. Right. You know, and something, you know, I mean, for me, I'm just going to say this in case it triggers something, but like for me, it's, it's all, it, every day is different. Like having a, a set writing space is good for me in case I'm resisting writing something that deep down I want to because I can go to it. So sometimes having that structure is like, I'm suddenly like, oh yeah, I know why I'm resisting this, but it will be good. But other times it's like what's most creative for me or soul fulfilling is to leave the house and go see that friend and or listen to that like NPR thing that gives me, an, you know what I mean? It's yeah. not always writing. And so I feel like, for me, it's like following whatever eccentric. I mean, obviously, I can't follow every eccentricity I have every day. I have like obligations <laughs> and bills to pay and people to take care of. But with it, like, what well, within that, you know? Um, anyway, what do you, what, yeah. Yeah, I just, I think as a, um, I think it's just so individual. You know, I think that. Um, there are athletes who need to um, have, you know, wear the same socks and the same hat. And, you know, you look at a baseball player, you know, and, or, uh, you know, or, or an Olympic athlete and the, the reg, the kind of training that they do, you know, um, because being a performing songwriter is, um, is a sport, you know, <laughs> it's a sport. <laughs> so um, I do think that live show playing is definitely something that you, that I, I, um, I had more, more stamina. I got more stamina as far as like doing it night after night after night after night. Mm -hmm. However, the quality of the show um, didn't, it didn't get better um, because there was no time to reflect 
So it's this um, balance of overworking. And so I think that that's true of writers as well. So I think it's really mm -hmm. important to have time to collect information, uh, feelings, you know, all that. Um, notice the world. Notice how you're relating to the world, how the world is relating to you. Um, in the same way that I feel like I'm a better live performer now, even though I don't play as much. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I'm a better writer now, even though I'm not writing as much. And I don't, I'm not afraid of the not writing periods anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I, went, I went through one that I was very afraid during, which was in 2009 after I put out Goodbye Youth. Um, I put, up, put out Goodbye Youth in 2008, and I didn't write until I wrote the album In the Eyes of Strangers, which which doesn't seem like a long time, but that didn't come out till 2010. And so I didn't write for basically all of 2008 and all of 2009. And at the end of 2009, I just started writing. I wrote like a whole record in like two months. Um, so what happens to me is, I really do believe this to be true, which is that I think I have to get, and this is just how I am, I, I have to get like so full that I can't put anything else in when we talk about, you know, the, <laughs> the talent as a, as a measure of units. Um, so, and then I, and I just can't put any more in and I have to let go. Mm -hmm. So it's either that or I'm empty and stuff comes in. I'm not, I'm not really sure that there's much of a difference. You know, I think that it's either I, I fill up, fill up, fill up, fill up, and I can't hold any more. So I have to release in in the way to then either fill up again or be empty to receive more. I think that that's the way it rolls for me. And mm -hmm. uh, sometimes that takes uh, a, a year. Sometimes that takes a really long time. I mean, I have like maybe six things that I'm writing, but I'm just working on them. They're pieces. They're not, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't had a, a moment song come at me. What is it? 2017 since 2015. So, and I'm totally okay with that. <laughs> yeah. So I love, I love what you're saying because you're saying, A, it's totally individual, you know, because you've heard other people's process and this is your process. So you're going to find, if you haven't found your own process yet, you will. And mm -hmm. even when you find it, it may change. Yeah. Uh, and that um, to, to be okay with periods where you're not writing, to not be afraid of that, like just to allow that and allow time to collect, um, allow time to observe the world. Um, and I love the, the way you talk about being empty or filling up and then that's, that's so well said and beautiful. Yeah. And also like in a, in a, in a school atmosphere, you know, um, I talk about this with my students, you know, like, um, but I also want them to do what I tell them to do, you know, so there's nothing wrong with, um, you mean doing the songwriting exercises or that yeah, kind of thing? And writing, right. every, and writing every day. I mean, when you're 17, 18 years old, I was writing every day. I, I was absolutely, I mean, it might not have been structured object writing 10 minutes, think about your senses. I was writing about my life. I was writing about every feeling I had, um, the immediacy of life. I, I was dire. I had diaries. I was journaling. I, you know, so it's life is, so that's a great time. You know, that's a mm -hmm. wonderful time to be alive when you're, and you're, you're just like learning so much and you're independent and you're figuring out that you are your own individual person and that nobody can just come along and pick you up now. And you know, like, and, um, and you're going to go to college and you're going to be able to make your own decisions and you're responsible for it. It's really, really exciting. And so there's a lot to write about. You're falling in love really hard and, uh, you know, you're, everything's just, um, everything's fast. And, and, um, and there's a beautiful, you can hear it in any artist's young albums, that angst of youth uh, that comes across. I mean, there's usually a lot of anger. There's usually a lot of, uh, there's usually a lot of first person stuff, a lot about themselves, about relationships, about, uh, you know, uh, wanting to win. Um, there's that, that kind of stuff. And then, um, so with my students, I, I ask them to write every day. 
And so I'm just trying to say that there's nothing, I, I wouldn't want people to think I'm saying, oh, you don't have to write, you know, it's like, it either comes to you out of the walls or it doesn't. Like, that's not what I'm saying. That's, that's just my, ex I do work really hard at the songs once they come out. When I co-write, it's a totally different thing. When I want to write a song that sounds a certain way or that has a certain groove, like I might hear something on the radio or love this, like, um, I've been listening to this Jeff Buckley lately and um, thinking about writing melodies like that, you know, you know, different things that get on my mind. Then, I, then I'm kind of practicing those things. But, um, but there's, that reminds me of the book, The Artist's Way, which is a very famous book um, that everyone kind of copied after that came out, <laughs> Cameron's book. So, um, you know, where you write every day. And those are wonderful things to do. And they're wonderful boundaries to set for yourself, whether it's, okay, you know, our semester is 16 weeks. So for 16 weeks, you know, just do this. You don't ever have to do it again, but just try it because it might really work for you. You might really love it. And if you try it and you know it doesn't work for you, at least you know it doesn't work for you. Um, right. And then you can do, right. you can find something else. So, yeah, well, I love when there are like structured environments, like I'm somewhere for a week, like I'm going to meet with you and we have a day to write a song. Like, that's yeah. fun. You'll get it done. Like you have this pram or you're going away for a weekend and you're writing. So you're, you're showing up to do the work, but I feel like what's underlying what you're saying, you've been writing songs for all these years is that you, you trust yourself and you trust your creative process. So right now in your life, you're a parent, you're a student, you're a professor. So yeah. maybe you're not like spending four hours writing songs, but that doesn't mean you won't write songs. Right. Yeah. And, yeah, I, um, I'm totally, I'm totally happy with, um, I'm totally happy with my life. <laughs> so I okay, wait, that's yeah. perfect. Cause that's what I want to ask you my next question. Okay. Yeah. So, um, did I, did I mischaracterize that or was that, a, was that, did that feel true to you? What? What I, when I just was sort of highlighting what you just said. Oh, it felt totally true. Yeah. Okay. So this is what I want to ask you. So we used to have this joke. I was in this group called Live from New York. Um, I remember, yeah. One of um, our songwriting friends, Teddy Goldstein, would always make the joke. But he was really just repeating a common um, belief that was like, you know, what are you going to do? Like, your life, your, if your life gets too good, you won't be able to write any more songs. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Your songwriting will suck. So just that idea that you need to have this, like, you know, terrible breakup or something happen. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I just wonder the way you might talk about that because I know that, you know, you've been writing all, all this time, all along, all, all along. And there were times um, maybe when you were on the road, when it was hard and like lonely or out there playing yeah. for months at a time, um, you're not maybe able to connect with people in, in a really deep way. And then now you have this, you know, such a rich, full life. You're more grounded in Boston and, yeah. and, I, like you said, I'm really happy with my life just now. And, and, and yet you're, you know, you're still putting out records and you're writing about these things. Is the process different for you? Or how would you talk about that? Yeah, I think that, um, so yeah, what Teddy said to me, I remember, because that was like in 2000 when I met you, or 99 when I met you, and I was hanging, and Teddy did a bunch of shows with me too. I love that guy. He's such a good writer. And um I don't know. I had like broken up with some girl and then I was going out with someone else quickly. And he was like, well, you know, uh, you're going to have a catalog of great songs. So, you know, like as a, you know, that's what he meant was, you know, and Sean Colvin has that song where she says, um, well, I got a good song out of it, out of, out of you or something. And I mean, you know, there, I think this comes down to, I mean, I'll say uh, it, so what I think is going to, is the test right now for me is, um, am I able to shift and become the kind of writer that can write about things other than how I feel about you or how I think you feel about me or, you know, anything in the me, you world, mm. you know, so yeah, I put out 27 records or you know i've published you know 200 songs or something but like uh, of those 200 songs how many aren't about relationships and there's really not that many now 
I, I could, that's the, that's the hard truth, you know. Um, I could broaden the stroke and say, well, this was really about, but it, that's not really true. So I think that this time period for me and shifting into a full-time teaching position and going to school is, is, a, is, a, is a pivot, a, 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 a conscious and purposeful pivot um, because I need to figure out, <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I, I can't, I, I just need to do something else to take my mind off of whether or not I'm going to be able to write anymore, which is a pretty um, scary place to be. I've been there before, but when I was still living um, uh, an electric life, I don't, I don't know how else, like, like a spark to life, you know, um, mm -hmm. spark after spark after spark. And um, I don't you mean like touring and playing shows and that sort of and up and people, down. people, yeah, and relationships yeah. and I mean, everything, mm -hmm. you know, how I moved my, everything, how I moved my body, everything was sparky or, um, so I, I, I feel good to be less kind of, you know, constantly, uh, constantly lighting a firecracker is kind of how I think of it. You know, there's like only a period of time and then it goes up. Or, so I feel better that I don't live and I don't feel that way anymore. Um, sometimes I miss it, but um, I think that, so I think right now it's like, maybe other writers go through this where it's like, I either, it's all about getting better. <laughs> it's like, but can I write in a, a different way in a yeah. more gentle way mm. and there's also this reminder i was listening to um bruce springsteen uh because i was putting my catalog together of songs to play for students and um you know bruce springsteen writes a lo lot of songs about other people in his life he writes songs about his father and how his father grew up working in a factory not to say that there aren't elements of what's going on for you know, Mr. Springsteen at the time, or maybe elements of struggle with his wife or his kid. I mean, I'm sure those things are in there, but they're, they're born from or seeded from another person. And I haven't written about my past. That's the other thing I realized mm. that I've never written this. I mean, in my life as Melissa Farrick, I, I haven't written songs about before I was 20. Mm. So I have an enormous amount of fuel to, to write about. Um, mm -hmm. And this gets to, uh, you know, that we have to be, you know, the other thing that you hear all the time, which is like, you have to be willing to write the thing you're most afraid to write about. Yeah. Uh, and... You know, I think that that's probably true. I think that is true. When you write it is up to you. <laughs> yeah, when you're ready. Yeah, and that's different for different people. Yeah. And when you say write it, maybe for me, it isn't in the form of song anymore. Maybe it's in a pedagogy. Maybe it's in a class. In, you know, maybe it's a book. Maybe it's a play. Um, yeah. Maybe, maybe it's mentoring. I don't, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know, but I, I think um, the thing that I'm most kind of into right now, as far as like what I've been thinking, what I've been thinking about uh, is that words in and of themselves have no meaning at all. And that um, they only have meaning when they're interpreted. So, that has kind of thrown me back a little bit, which, which makes perfect sense. It's not like it's that hard for me to understand. But so when I write a song and I play you a song, I, I can say to you, or as a teacher, I can say, well, I know what that line means because it means this. And the writer doesn't think that it means that at all. And so every word means, every word means something different to every single person, which is like mm -hmm. mind blowing. And then I, even if I say the word it, you have an image in your head of what that is. And it's not the same as mine. So when we put words together, or even when we have words apart, people's inner, people's movies, people's brains, it's, it's really different. So 
if I'm trying to think, if, if I think that I'm, I, I just, I, I'm really excited that I know this at kind of a, a, a more thought out level going into this new semester because I have said, but that's not what you wrote. And, and I shouldn't say that because it's my interpretation of oh, how yeah. it's been written. Not, not, okay. I'm not talking about grammar or anything. I'm talking about meaning. Yeah. So I think it's different than saying to someone, it, whether it's a student or a, a co-writer, um, tell me what you're trying to say here. Right? Yeah. Now. Describe it to me more. Um, yeah. Well, I feel like often if you ask someone what they're trying to say and they, tell, they start talking to you mm -hmm. conversationally, like I'll be like, okay, now I get it. Like, right. And I like write it down. I'm like, okay, you just said this. Right. And then give can, them their words. Can, yeah. Can you put that in the song? But I, but even so, like, of course I'm interpreting it differently. I mean that you could, you could geek out on that. Like, yeah, totally. We could. <laughs> I love that you asked yourself, what kind of a writer do I want to be? And like, how mm. is that? Shifting? And how do I do that? I think that's really important and mature and brave and amazing. And um, I feel like that's something that's going to come up for a lot of writers. Yeah. Um, and one of the reasons I asked you about like, you know, when you're happy, can you write songs is because I think, I know for me, I can get into a habit. Like if a song is sad or it's trying to resolve something I didn't understand, it, it keeps coming knocking. You know what I mean? It's like, it keeps coming knocking to be like, write me resolve me you know i'm unresolved whereas like a hat like a, there's this song about celebrating that i've <laughs> that i've had forever i just don't finish it because it's about celebrating and then i just go play you know and i'm you know so i have to i don't know how if you approach happy songs you know if they need to be written um you know so that's my that's my experience with that like i i, I don't actually like i have to ask myself and now that you're saying, Anne, how, how do you want to approach this so that you can actually share it? Because it may not come knocking as much. Right. Yeah, I think that's, that's interesting that you say that. I, I keep having this thought that I want to buy an electric guitar and, mm. um, and make like a really hard rock album. Mm. And, um, and it's the complete opposite of my life, right? Right? Like, I mean, that the volume, uh, uh, aggressive singing, that's not, like, where I'm at. But I, I'm thinking about approaching music. I'm thinking that the next thing I might do is approach music as more of a uh, like another persona mm. in the way that Bowie did with Ziggy Stardust, where this life that I'm living and that I've been living for, I mean, particularly the last three years, but I would say probably more than like the last six years, but, uh, you know, in relationship, in family, in consistency, not inconsistency, in consistency, uh, <laughs> not traveling as much, uh, setting boundaries, expanding my teaching, expanding my um, education, and being happy about all those things. Um, maybe what would be really fun is to just to, to think about what is the complete opposite of that. And that is like the Sex Pistols, you know? So, yeah. Um, Oh, I love this. Wait, song, songwriters, yeah. I just want to highlight the gold Melissa's dropping right now. So this is the question you can ask yourself, whether you've been yeah. writing a year or five minutes or 10 years, like, how do I want to write? And sure, songs might just uh, show up, but it's an interesting question you could journal on. Do I want to write about myself? Do I have stories to tell, relationships I want to write about? Do I want to do, as you said, Bruce Springsteen did, he's writing about his dad, he's writing about other people. Um, yeah consciously telling their stories do i want to write as a persona which sounds so fun yeah so fun it's like flipping okay, the switch you know now. so like it's like if you only started if you only if you didn't play that piano anymore and you got 
you know, an organ and only wrote on an organ. Yeah, well, I've actually been doing that lately. Like, I'm only writing the one song to a drum loop, and I'm only... Oh, yeah, cool. Um, you know, because it just leads... You just have... It's exciting to see where that might lead. It leads new places, for sure. So I think that's another thing, that once you run out of writing from home base, like, from your home uh, base, you know, um, there's an entire field, you know? And so I... Um, I have no idea if I'm going to do that. I just know that I, I, when you said something keeps knocking and I saw myself again last night out in my dream, I saw myself in my dream um, with a Telecaster, like, like playing through an amp. I used to have a lot of electric guitars and I don't have any anymore, but I still have an amplifier. But, um, and you know, Ed Velasquez from Q Division, said to me the last time I was there, he was like, you should make a like rock Irish, like, you know, aggressive album. And I, I, I thought, I, he said that to me like three years ago. I, I thought, this guy's out of his mind. I was like, really, Ed? That's what you, he was like, yeah, that's, I think that's what you should do. Mm. Was, Ed Velasquez would probably be a great guy to make a record like that with, you know? So. That sounds really, really super fun. Yeah, it could be really I want, fun. I want to be there when you do that. Um, yeah. All right, I know. I realize we've been talking now for a while, so I want to okay. um, respect our listeners' time. Um, I want to ask you two other things. One, I, well, I'm hoping you're going to play a song for us and tell okay. us a story of how it came to be. Um, but before that, or actually, I'll ask you the other question after. So, do you, do you have a song you'd be willing to share with us and the story of how it? Sure. Well, now I now I wish I could play a song that wasn't about me, but. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but uh let's see okay i'll i'll do um i, I want to play careful is that okay or Um, so the story about that, uh, the reason why I'm going to play this song is because I'm really proud of this song. And this song is one that came, uh, out of the wall and at me. It's a, it's a true story. And, um, there's some liberty taken, but not a lot. And there wasn't a lot of rewriting that needed to happen with this song. It pretty much came out intact. Um, where, where were you sitting when it came? Uh, in the living room on my couch. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and you just got the words or you heard the melody too? All, uh, the words came first. Mm -hmm. And uh, the chords, actually, I was in the tuning for a song called, do you want me to tilt this down a little bit? So you, I was in the tuning uh, for Still Right Here, which is another song of mine. Yeah. That goes, <laughs> the beginning. But anyway, so that, that's just like the beginning part is just the intro of so right here. It's not really, um, it's just the intro and then it's the refrain of the chorus, but um, at the end of the chorus, but it's the hook. But so I was in that tuning and I had just written careful and I thought, well, I'm in, um, it's drop D and then drop A. So it's D, uh, sorry, D, G, D, G, B, A. So um, I was like, well, what happens if I do this same <laughs> chords but in the opposite direction so mm -hmm. that's, that was as simple as it was I was like well I just and then I didn't and then I changed the second chord and I didn't know that I could go and, and so I liked that and it sounded like something I hadn't really done much of before and the second part was um, that I had just watched the documentary on um, uh, the discovery of black holes, and mm -hmm. um, oh. and um, anyway, it was described as um, the 
the discovery, the, the moment that a black hole happens is like when stars collide. And when, when two stars collide, they create a black hole. And um, it was described in the documentary as the same, that it was so beautiful. It was this moment that whose, whose beauty and depth and massiveness basically could only be compared to the moment when you fall in love. And um, I thought that that was amazing. And I wrote it down. I was watching the documentary and I wrote that down. Mm. Uh, so I thought I want to use that later. In the bridge of this song, I wrote, mm. um, and it has a reflection of that or a kind of a tipping of the hat to that idea because my friend and her husband were going through a very, very difficult time. And um, he, had, uh, he was an addict and he had relapsed and she found him um, and, they, and, they, and he got help and he got better. But um, it was a very, it was, I, I, I watched her go through this struggle and helped her and um, as a friend, you know? And so I, that, came to me because it felt like um i don't know it just reflected the the, the black hole thing so anyway hmm. <laughs> none of this really makes sense so just come and close the door let's leave it all to something else to show us what it is we're in for Sitting all the way across this room I just gave myself to you And every love I've ever had I want to thank for Getting me to you Every love I've ever had I want to thank for getting me to you. I'm going to be careful, careful, careful. I'm going to be careful, careful, careful. I'm going to be so careful, careful, careful. I'm going to be careful. Cause it's out of nowhere, it's got me I am overwhelmed and fall Every time I start to listen to the feel I close my eyes and picture I'm gonna let myself sink right down in To the safety of your voice and I'm gonna let you I want to thank you for Sorry. Getting me to you Every love I've ever had I want to thank you for Getting me to you And I'm gonna be careful, careful, careful We'll be careful Careful, careful, careful. Gonna be so careful, careful, careful. I will be careful. Cause we have both been broken by big things, been planes up there circling. We have watched our friends collapse under their own gravity. Careful with me, please. Careful with me, please. Throw back your head. Open up your heads. Come on, baby, laugh. Let's not. Let our future down Wandering around in our past You're so beautiful You're so right here it Kinda hurts to look But I'm gonna turn the light on Look into your eyes Feel the weight of this love but I'm gonna turn the light on Look in your eyes 
Feel the weight of our love. I'm gonna be careful, careful, careful. We'll be careful, careful, careful. Gonna be so careful, careful, careful. I promise I will be careful of you. Thank you so much, Melissa. I love that song. Thank you. That was so sure. beautiful. Thank you. Thank wow. You. Oh, and thanks for, thanks for chatting and being here with us. Um, one last question before you go. Any parting advice for songwriters? If there was one thing that you would want to impart or share? I guess... Um, just that every song is worth it, you know, like, um, don't worry if it seems like you're writing the same song over and over again. I think that musicians don't give themselves uh, as much leeway as, uh, painters do particularly. Uh, I think that musicians go through periods as well. And so, you know, I just see a lot of young artists start to get frustrated because they, they think that all of their songs sound the same. And, um, you know, that's really okay. And you need, you know, 15 songs that are kind of similar to get the two best ones out of it sometimes. Um, and I don't know, it just reminded me of that just because um, I've been listening to some Motown lately too. And some, you know, a lot of those songs, they really sound similar. It's a, it's a style, you know, and sometimes um, younger artists too, particularly, they're figuring out what their style is. And so in that process, just, you know, like take yourself, just like give yourself a break, you know, and mm -hmm. like try not to judge, you know, if everything sounds the same or if this is really your style or, um, you know, is it good enough or um, it's just the, the judgment I think is what can keep us locked away. And, and that um, can also stop us from, from writing more and I think that it closes the door, you know, um, and all, all I want from me, I, I want from myself is to keep my door open, you know, so, mm -hmm. um, so I, I struggle with that still sometimes, everybody does and it's okay to struggle with it, um, but if you can know that you're, A, that you're struggling with it and B, that that's okay <laughs> and see that you should try to leave the door open a little bit, you know, even if it is just cracked, so that's what, that's mm -hmm. what I would say. <laughs> I love that. That's beautiful. Good. Leave the door open. Keep yeah. writing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Thank you, Melissa. Okay, and thanks. Bye, everybody. Okay, bye. Thanks so much for joining us. If you know someone who would enjoy or benefit from this podcast, please share it with them. Thanks so much. Much love.